Norway, most of the floods in the fall are caused by atmospheric rivers, which are phenomena that bring a lot of water across the Atlantic Ocean towards the coast of Norway. And in 99% of the cases, we get a very heavy extreme precipitation event that can cause flooding in some of the catchments. But it's often the west coast that it hits. Bergen is a city between seven mountains. It's a city with a lot of steep hillsides. It's 460 square kilometers. Bergen is actually the most rainy city in Europe. And we have had up to 155 millimeters in 24 hours. The Nesson watercourse is the second largest in the city. We have rather small watersheds consists of river systems and two lakes. When it's heavy rain, the level of the lake is going up and you have bottlenecks. And when the capacity is overridden, then the water has to find another way. Flooding is by far the kind of natural damage which uh, is most costly for the Norwegian society as such. In 1918, a long time, the record flood in Western Norway. 1940, that observed 480 millimeter rainfall. 1953, the discharge at Reikenes was the largest ever measured. The 2009 flood was about 150 millimeter almost. In 2014, we got very severe damage. The TWEX project is uh, short for translating weather extremes into the future. And in this uh, project, we zoom in to two particular areas, the 2005 and the 2014 flood. And we find that when they hit in the future, more catchments will be affected and there will be more red flood warnings. When we had uh, the flooding in 2005, came over to Norway as an atmospheric river. And we had a landslide which hit the houses, which uh, sadly cost the life of three persons. The shopping center of Nestemil is built over the, the river. When we had uh, the flooding about 120 cubic meter in flow, and luckily it didn't fall. The last event in Bergen in 2005 was a landmark event for the municipality working with climate change adaptation. Municipalities have to adapt towards increasing flood warnings. So we use this event-based approach to tell narratives in a context that these decision makers can use. The meeting with the CISO and the TWEX project, it was even more scary than we have got from other projects, talking about 100% plus in climate factor, and we normally use 40%. So then we really have to be even more careful when we are planning the flood routes. It's about discussing plausible futures. What if this happened again? What if this happened with a larger magnitude? How can we be best prepared for that? Since 2005, we had done a lot of things, taken away bottlenecks, taken away problems. In the Nestor and Watercourse, uh, Myrdal Lake, we had to build quite a new dam and uh, we use that lake to prevent flooding. We have now made uh, the systems much more robust so they can handle the situation. To simulate floods for particular locations in Norway, we use high-resolution climate models and high-resolution weather forecast models that feed information into the flood models. And so that's our tool to look into the future. We are planning with a 100-year horizon. We have to plan with the best knowledge we have today. And then we need to, to have a close relationship to researchers and research projects. For us climate scientists, it's important to find ways that we can produce information about this climate change that is most useful for decision makers to act upon. Question is, how much more rain will we have? Is it 30%, 40%, 50%? You really have to construct the city so it is robust, so you can take care of your citizens in an urbanized area.
I don't think there is any limit to the magnitude of these floods. Sooner or later, when the situation is right, then we can get even worse events than we've had so far. Clearly, climate change is a serious challenge. The need is that we start acting now to try and reduce the consequences of future climate change that we already are starting to observe and that we know will happen in the future.